135. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I usually start recording a few minutes ahead just in case it starts early. Okay. But yeah, just like give people a chance to show up. Yeah, no, for sure. I wasn't going to start. <laughs> I can record as well if you want. Hola, comadre. <laughs> I mean, if you want, if you want to do it for yourself, but yeah. Let's see. I, I, I think I did. I pressed record. Ah, oh, no, you have to give me permission to do my own version. Oh, that's weird. Well, I guess if no. you try, how do I give you permission? Please record record permission from the host. Nah, never mind. I'll record. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do it now. Hell yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm seeing some friends that I have not seen in a long time. Ooh. Oli. <laughs> Me encanta. Where are you seeing? How are you? Bien. Oye, ¿y esto? ¿Ya lo voy a decir en inglés? Sí, we shall speak in English. We're going to start at 1.35. Hola, Jari, la Fran. Hola. Hola, hermosa. <risa> Qué bacán. Yo creo que decía ser en español, en buena. Como que... <risa> es más español, creo. Subtitulado. No <risa> Ay, qué lindo. Y... La Fra no la escucho, ¿ustedes la escuchan? Perdón, ahora sí, oye, viene subiendo la letra chiquitita ¿eh? y tiene prohibida las cámaras. La voy, a la voy a mostrar muy rápido y la voy a cortar. Yeah. Un, dos, tres. Yeah. Hola. 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 <risa> vuelvo, vuelvo al tiro, vuelvo al tiro. Qué lindo. La mamá también se va a conectar. Buena mi papi. Oh, oh me encanta. Guys, sorry, Oye, Dana. Oye, ¿vivís con tu tú? Oh, sí, estoy, estoy conectada desde su computador, de hecho. Sí, por eso. Qué bueno. Se van a unir más rato. We're gonna start at like 1.35. So sorry for uh, speaking in Spanish, but I'm seeing a bunch of friends from Chile that I have not seen in a long time. So I'm very excited. <laughs> Hello, Basil. Hi, Basil. Hi, Menage. Hi, Sari. Minaj is my friend, Michaela. I told, nice. I told her to come. Hey, Minaj. Hi. Hi. I have a few. I have a few decks of tarot cards, but I don't really know how to do anything cool. So amazing. One time, she read my tarot on the beach, and I think I cried. Did I cry? I it, was, I it was really emotional because you were like at the point where everything in your life was changing, like with moving out and stuff, and, and yeah. It was, very yeah cute menash what tarot decks do you have um so i got a few as a gift i have the um the classic uh what is it the yodorowsky tarot the one nice. with the, um, yeah um where, which which we're gonna teach today mostly oh, but but that's, it applies that's cool. to everything. Okay, yeah, and then I have like a cat one that my brother got for me as a birthday gift. It's very cute. That's the one that I did the reading for Sari with. And then like this herbal tarot, which is like, you know, this very 80s deck with like uh, like these classic illustrations and like plants for every um, every card. It's cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Hmm. Shout out to my mom, who's also on the call. Hola, Martita. Hola, mi amor. Shh, calladita. Calladita. Hola, Martita. Hola, ¿quién es? Dimo. Martita, estoy ocupando la bata que me diste. Sí, la veo. ¿Quién es tan...? Um, hay mucha gente. Hello everybody. Buena mami. Hola a todos. Sí, pues voy a poner oh. la cara un poco hoy que estoy rara. You have to speak in English though, Martita. No, I cannot. No, no. Let me. No, let you're me sleeping. Quiet and shut. 
Yeah. Go ahead, Go Alicia. <laughs> and on that note, I think maybe we should get started. I'm going to mute everyone. Cool. Except you. Hey, Ryan. Nice. So if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. I'm silent now. Cool. So we have uh, 30 minutes, right? I'm going to keep the chat open. And well, thank you guys for joining today. Um, my name is Micaela. I am a volunteer with 8Ball Community. And I will just dive right in um, in honor of time. So we were just discussing with some of the people here uh, that have joined, what tarot decks do you, do you use? I'm, I'm going to do an explanation today using basically um, the Jodorowsky Tarot de Marseille. Um, and, but my explanation really applies to all the tarot decks. You can use it with any tarot deck. So there's also others like the Mother Peace tarot deck that has round cards, very cool. Um, and the Tarot de Marseille is more like, I don't know, it's like all European people. So that's a cool thing about this one and that, and all the tarot decks that have appeared in the last years that there's like definitely more diversity than this one that I'm going to use. But I like this one because I like the Tarot de Marseille because it's the oldest one that people know of. So I'm going to do a brief screen sharing because I'm a nerd. So I have some slides for you that I'm going to post afterwards on the chat so that you can access this whenever you want. Uh, so. So I hope everyone can see this. Um, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, yeah, Tarot is anonymous. No one knows who invented it. Um, the earliest mention is in 1333. A deck of cards appeared somewhere in Italy. And they believe that the, um, that the playing cards, the one you use for poker, actually come from tarot. Uh, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit for our Spanish speakers that are on the call. Um, tarot is divided in two systems. You have the major arcana, which are these 22 cards uh, that you can see here on the screen. It starts, uh, the major arcana, basically, you have to imagine it of as like the hero's journey. It's like a narrative arc. So it starts with the fool, that is this card here. Um, the fool does not have a number, it's number zero, and it means endless energy. So then you go card one, two, three, four, five, and all of the cards have a specific meaning that has to do with uh, the symbology in terms of what figure appears on the card, but also with uh, the numbers. So for instance, number two, which is the Pope, means uh, duality, um, but also balance, uh, yin, yang, etc. And so the progression starts with the fool, that's like this endless energy represented by this card with no number, which uh, is like the wild card, and ends up with the world, which is uh, card number 21. And so I'm going to show you, um, just for, for you to have an understanding that tarot is a system, it's a full system. Um, you have to think of it, uh, Jodorowsky actually, uh, who is um, this artist who restored this, this uh, deck of cards because um, as I mentioned, this, this, the tarot de Marseille is very, very old. It's from the middle ages. 
um, it, it appeared randomly, but the colors have been washed off through the years. So for instance, this is another version of the Tarot de Marseille that I found on the street, <laughs> basically. Um, and you can see that the colors are so different. And there's a lot of uh, figures and um, symbols that are very, very different. So Khodorovsky did this whole like um, research to find like the original colors. Um, so you have this other uh, version, which I, I really like. I really recommend this uh, deck of cards, but you can, you can really use whichever you wish. So with this card, with the world, which is the last card and represents the totality, completion, revolution, um, the world. Um, I wanted to show you how there is a, how this card represents the full circle that tarot is, in the sense that in this card you have represented um, in these four animals. These four animals also represent these the four different suits of the minor arcana. So there is a correspondence between the major arcana with the minor arcana. The major arcana, when you're reading and you pull up a major arcana card, which are the classic ones that you've heard of, death, um, the devil, the tower, uh, the star, the major arcana have, the, the meaning of major arcana cards generally represents some like big picture uh, question or like, some personality trait that you have or that the people that you're reading uh, has. So whenever you pull like a major kind of card, you know that it's, it's telling you something about something deeper. Whereas when you pull up a minor arcana card, which are these four symbols, the ace of cups, so the, the cups, the swords, the pentacles, in Spanish, los oros, um, and the ones in Spanish, the bastos. Um, these cards have to do with everyday, uh, everyday aspects of life. Um, so here, I just wanted to I'll I'll give you this information, but I just wanted to show you how there is correspondence between um, the minor arcana, uh, but also with the elements. So the cups are feelings. Um, this, please feel free to unmute yourself or yourself, uh, yourselves. Tell me if you need me to slow down or if you're not hearing me properly, whatever. So these are the cups. The cups represents feelings because feelings are, you can't contain them. It's like, I don't know, right now, for instance, with Corona, you hear some news on the radio and you're just so overwhelmed. And it's not something like you can, you know, push that aside and say like, I'll carry on with my day and I'll just water the plants and start working. It's like, it just, it inunda, it inundates you. You're like overflowed or whatever. So the cups are, uh, represents the feelings. Then we have the swords. The swords represent the mind, the intellect, um, career decisions. Uh, so here are the swords in the Tarot de Marsella. They're like this. Uh, the shape is very interesting. They're like curvy. I can tell you the story of that card if we have time at the end. Um, so yeah, and I'll, and I'll get in a second what each number means and understanding the numbers in tarot is very cool because you can really apply it to everything tarot that's the the mysterious and like the mystical thing that tarot has the correspondence between tarot uh, and certain elements of buddhism uh, of the kabbalah um, really also like the I Ching, there's, there's stuff that is very, very universal. And that's why I really like to use this tool. I consider it a tool. I don't even use tarot like for fortune telling. I use it as a tool for um, thinking over a project or even thinking about how am I going to approach some problem that I have um, in a relationship 
or even just like thinking how to I don't know like face like even my days like oh how is this day gonna be and like suddenly I pull up I don't know like an ace of pentacles and I know that I'm like I'm gonna be mindful and thinking the rest of the day about um, maybe my body you know the pentacles are like this this coin it's like a mineral a golden coin or or another or a copper coin it's a mineral that's raw that comes from the earth and we humans hone this we we le, la acuñamo and we give it a certain um, meaning we give it value so the the pentacles means um has to do with your with your wealth with your material uh, wealth con tu bienestar material whether it's your health or whether it's how much money you make and finally the ones the ones uh, the last of the the minor arcana represents creative and sexual energy so the ones are um imagine like this stick that comes from the earth like a bamboo stick that you can um you can cut and you can build a house with that you can defend yourself with that um you can make a wood sculpture the the ones are fire that's their element uh, so it's really like in some ways uh, your calling in the world is what you came to do and how you channel your talents uh, but it's also sexual energy so yes you can see here um this is really like a sort of christian judeo-christian symbology but the angel it represents the cups and uh, etc so and here I wanted to show you how actually the playing cards you can also read tarot with playing cards because um, the cups are the hearts the pentacles are the diamonds the ones are the clubs and the sword fades okay um, so here is some information on numerology. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through this in detail, but I just wanted to explain to you that tarot works in uh, you break down uh, whether it's looking at the minor arcana or the major arcana. Everything comes down to ten numbers. So uh, knowing if you, uh, I now I now know by heart this. Uh, meanings attached to numbers and it's cool because it really applies to everything it's, if you're familiar with the tree of life of uh, so the tree of the kabbalah um, it's really the same system and uh, it goes from one to ten one meaning beginnings so if i pull up for instance i'm reading tarot and i pull up an ace of pentacles which is the one of pentacles i know that this is telling me something about new beginnings in uh, my professional life or in terms of like how much money do i make or how secure i am or the home um i know that this is telling me something about whether i want a new beginning in this or this is coming to me um so but it's also like the whole in in potencia in potio um then uh, so number two is duality yin and yang as well and i want to show you how these cards also have like a certain correspondence in the major arcana so number three uh, creation like the yin and the yang create something new a new idea um, number four is the most uh, is one of the most stable cards in tarot so if you get a number four you know it has to do with like either you're looking to have stability and security in your life it's like a table upon which you can build and number five is the bridge so you can see from number one to four we are also we're sort of like and you can see this here in the world from number one to four we are like in the realm of earth so the minor arcana related to the earth if we can divide 
this this um, the world into two, cut it in half. You have the pentacles and the ones that, that are both like organic elements that come from the earth. And then you have uh, the cups and the swords, which are like feelings, like the heart and mental activity. So all of like air, air energy. So number five is right here in the middle. And in the major arcana, number five is the Pope. The Pope is a bridge in this system. <laughs> uh, it's a bridge between earth and heaven, between human and divine. So you can see it's very, very old school in the figures that it's using, but I think there's something interesting there. You can think, not the Pope, maybe like, fuck that, but you can think um, a, a shaman, a mystic, someone who, who is a guide for you, someone who shows you like a certain road. Um, and then number six, which is the lovers. Let me see if I can pull it up really quickly. I don't know, can't find it. Well, uh, I know here. Number six um, is the lovers. So like the tag for number six is doing what you love. So it has to do with choice. Like after you've been through this like transition and like crisis, like, oh, I don't know if I want to go this way or this way, then it's like, okay, but you have to choose and make material your decision to do what you love. Number seven is action in the world. Number seven is the card of the dancers. It's the card of the artists. Um, it means action in the world. It's, yeah, uh, and it's represented by these two horses that are like pulling this carro, this chariot, and they are, their color is like light blue, which is which in, the, in this system means um, like spirituality, divinity. Um, number eight is perfection, and this relates a lot to eight ball, to what we do with eight ball. I think um, number eight in the major arcana is justice. Um, so it's a magic number, you know, and it's like about balance and like balance, but also motion. And then number nine is end of cycle, which in the major arcana is represented by the hermit. That is one of these cards that I lost, unfortunately. Uh, end of cycle, solitude. So, you know, after like reaching this perfection, you're starting to like, mm, like to ponerse mustia. And, and you go inwards. You go inwards and you just, you know, like sort of what we're living right now, I feel in some way, Corona is number nine in a certain way. And here with this, I am, I agree a lot. We, I don't know if you guys read this article by Arundhati Roy that was on the Financial Times about the situation with COVID in India and sort of saying that Corona is a portal between an old world in which we were, especially for the folks who are here that live in New York, we're just, you know, like it all, it's all about how much time you put into work and how many, like, I don't know, places you visit and how many people you see. And it's like this endless, like, check off, check off of things. So I, that's why I think like Corona is like a number nine in Tarot. It's like we're coming to the end of the world as we know it. And we're going towards this number 10, this revolution, this complete cycle, um, which in the minor arcana, number 10 is actually the wheel of fortune, which is one of those cards that people really like get, usually like get, um, are afraid of in some way. So I think, and this I'll, I'll, I'll send all of you a handout with all of this information. So these are some of like the, the symbology that is like, I would say pretty universally attached to some colors. Uh, red is activity, the animal realm, and that is either in the East and the West. So there's, there's a couple like interesting things here, uh, but yeah, I wanted to, um, let me see.
It's 1.54, so I'm going to jump right away into demonstrating you how to do a reading. Let me see, there's a comment on the chat. Hermit, the Virgo card. Nice, Basil. I love those connections between uh, tarot and astrology. Uh, so please feel free to unmute yourself and give more information if you feel like it. Um, okay, so I'll show you. This is like, oh, sorry. This is um, the last slide that I'll show you, and then we will just go right away into a demonstration. Um, I think for those who are starting to read tarot, a really, really way of doing this is uh, I just do a very basic spread in which I take out three cards. So I like to see myself. Let me see. So basically, what I do is that you can do this for yourself, you can do it for someone else. Uh, there's people who like attach a bunch of rules to the shuffling and like that you can only like cut with a certain hand. And I am like very punky for tarot. I don't, I don't follow really too many rules. I just know like, know a little bit about like what I just told you about uh, and not much more. So can you see my camera? Can you um, stop sharing your screen? Yeah. So that your camera shows up cool. on the recording. Thank you. Yeah. Are we good now? Yeah. Okay. So um, I do this shuffle, uh, very simple. And I spread the cards on the table. If, we, if you have a piece of cloth under it, it will like be like smooth and nice. So does anyone want to give me a question? Does anyone want a reading? <laughs> Free offer. <laughs> okay so we're gonna um, let's do a reading about COVID maybe yeah I'm gonna do like how to eso, save eso. the world how to save the world let's see no one wants to ask their COVID questions so like, we need you to yeah. ask them for us <laughs> I should ask I should ask the COVID question for you guys yeah. Ask the co ask the okay. COVID questions. Okay. Tell us about the world. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna read a spread for for ourselves as people who are going through COVID. Yeah. Like sort of what should our mission be in a certain way, or like how should we deal with this in May? It's like you know we have a new month that's starting. So, yeah, it's always new beginnings. So, what I do is that I pick three cards. You can hover above, above them, do whatever you wish. I'll just do this pretty quickly. So, I'm gonna pick this card, this card. I never flip them at the beginning because I really like the tension. So, I pick three cards and the the easy spread in tarot really is that and i'm gonna this do this for where's your right here is this at your right or is this at the right this is the right oh shit this is my left okay so <laughs> yeah la derecha okay so um in tarot the way you do this is this card will represent the question i have my stick here this card represents the question that you're asking. It will give us information like what exactly is this question about? This card represents 